Hello one and all and welcome to episode 204 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, as always, coming to you live from YouTube and we are smelling this rather mysterious concoction here. I can tell you straight away that that is not its proper bottle, it's a lab sample and if, you're, if you've already seen from the um, title of the video precisely what it is that we are smelling, you may not be surprised that all I've got is a lab sample. I am just going to go on the tablet to make sure that everything is coming through loud and clear. It seems to be fine. For the benefit of those of you watching live, uh, those of you who've tuned in live, the plan for today is that we're going to do two videos back to back. So the first one is on this, the new Pure Oud or Pure Oud from Louis Vuitton. And then after we finish this video, we're going to let YouTube do its thing for two or three minutes before we come back with another one, a review of a brand new flanker to a very successful scent that came out about four years ago. It's actually the second flanker to this scent already. You may be able to guess what it is, but we'll save that one for the next episode. First comment today goes to Lisbeth, who says hello. Drax says hello from Glasgow. Benjamin is saying hi from down the road in Essex. Looking forward to seeing how this compares with the night. Yeah, thank you for, for um, taking us straight to the heart of the matter. Uh, lots of comments. Hello, Mr. Persilaise. Good to see you, says Cutie. Hello to you as well. Hello, hello from Lulwa and Nancy and Rich Mitch and Sam is saying hello all the way from uh, Manila. So um, keep the messages coming. Uh, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Uh, please consider supporting my work on coffee. You will find the details of all of that in the video description below. Uh, Woozy is saying, thought it might be a Roger perfume, but this might be even more expensive. And that's a reference to the fact that I trailed this video by saying that we're going to be reviewing one of the most expensive perfumes currently available on the market because I, I, I think I think this must be up there surely um, and we've got to talk about price in today's episode haven't we um, also for those of you watching live I should just say that I have on personalize.com over on the blog um, I've just seen your comment Sue and I promise you that was not planned but now that you've said what you've said I'm thinking oh my goodness She's right. Anyway, um, for the benefit of those of you watching live on Persilaze.com, I've released details of an event that I will be doing at Harrods um, a week tomorrow. So if you are interested uh, in what that might be and whether you're going to be uh, in the London area next week and would like to come along to the event, then please check out Persilaze.com. Anyway, Pure Oud from uh, Louis Vuitton, the latest addition to the Louis Vuitton range. Uh, composed by Jacques Cavalier, of course, as, the, as they all are at Vuitton at the moment, because he's their in-house perfumer. And there's no avoiding this. This retails, in the UK at least, for just over a thousand pounds, I think for a hundred mils. It's either a thousand and forty or a thousand and thirty, something in that region, perhaps. Perhaps it's even gone up. So we have got to talk about that at some point, and I have a question for you about all of that, but we should also smell it. Now, I have smelt it before. I've worn it a couple of times. I even wore it today. I haven't yet seen what it's like just on paper, because each time I've very much wanted to wear it on skin. And it's 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 absolutely one of these scents where you, you kind of had to put the smell in one compartment and the composition in one compartment and judge it without knowing anything else about um, the product, the retail product. And then you also do have to look at how much it costs and how much Vuitton are charging for it. And also uh, we need to bear in mind that it's a limited edition because I think they've said that they're only going to be making or making available 2,000 bottles of this stuff globally. Um, and so that is bound to push up the price as well. But how does it smell? Um, my hands would be shaking if I held it, says Kim. Yeah, and 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 I think I think your heart would be beating as well because putting aside all of the other stuff, putting aside the price, putting aside the limited edition, etc., etc., etc. It's beautiful. That there is there is absolutely no denying for me, especially if you are uh, an oud aficionado, an oud fan, as I am, as you know I am. I've done videos on oud, as I'm sure a lot of you are as well. I think. Um, is stunning. I like Elizabeth's <laughs> comment, like any form of art, a piece is worth what an idiot is willing to pay for it. Should we take that step further and say all we need for this one is 2,000 idiots? I don't know, but it 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 is 
just stunning. Uh, the 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 oud, uh, the, the Vuitton themselves are saying that there are only three ingredients in this. That there that there is the oud, which they're saying is an Assam oud, and apparently, according to their claim, they have dosed the oud at ten percent, which, as most of you will know, is, is just an insane amount to put into a formula. And then the other two materials apparently are musks. Um, the the oud itself just smells like a dream of oud absolutely heavenly evocation of oud so it's got absolutely every single facet of oud that you would hope for and it reminds me of a description of oud that i wrote over on persilase.com uh several years ago when i did a when i did a a guide to the best oud perfumes incidentally that that guide is still on the blog and i also did a video to go with that guide perhaps i'll link to all of those in the in the video description below so every single oudy facet that you can think of it's got the medicinal side it's got the woody side. It's got that fantastic petroleum benzene side. It's got it's got the the goat skin hide. It's got the side. It's got the fecal side. It's got that hay-like aspect to it. It's got the sort of indolic jasminey aspect to it. It's got that really really clean stripped back heading in the direction of green opening. It's got leatheriness. I mean, I don't know if I said leathery. It's got sort of cloves. It's got fire. It's got flames. It's got heat. It's got passion. Darkness and mystery and romance. Um, in all seriousness, who's the target for this, says Shimon? Well, come on. 2,000 people around the world who buy expensive Louis Vuitton handbags? There's not going to be... It's not going to be hard for them to find 2,000 people to buy this stuff, right? They'll probably have some customers from certain parts of the world, I don't know, you know, maybe the Middle East, some customers who may just buy 10 in one go. I don't think Vuitton will struggle to find people who would be interested in this. Um, but as much as I've said about the Oud side of it, in a way, almost perversely, almost paradoxically, what I have really enjoyed... Um, wearing uh, enjoyed wear about wearing this is the musks in the base i don't know what um the most expensive synthetic musks out there are i mean i seem to remember that there was a firminish musk um that, that was sort of held as being particularly beautiful and particularly expensive but the way the musks that have been chosen and the, their dosage and their interaction with the um with the, the oud the way all of that has been balanced is just stunning because the the musks do something extraordinary on skin. They come out, yes, okay, they have that kind of dirty stroke clean feel that the best musks do, but they also come across as silvery and metallic, as 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 though it's sort of snow shot through with silver or 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 you know, mercury pouring across silver or aluminium, you know, really, really bright, bright aluminium. Um, maybe real musk, says Kim. I doubt it. I don't, I don't think they would have done that. Um, and, and I, I found, I find myself thinking as well of the, of the musk cocktail, the gorgeous musks that are used in, um, the Eau de Cologne from the Chanel exclusives line which has also got a fantastic, fantastic base of musks beneath the traditional cologne structure. So it it is stunning. It To me, it's really, really stunning. And I shall treasure these few drops and wear them sparingly. A lot of you have said, how does it compare to the night? Absolutely very, very obvious question to ask. For those of you who uh, may not be aware of what that's referring to, that's a Frederic Mal perfume composed by Dominique Ropion. It's called The Night, which is also fiendishly expensive i think it is still a, a maybe a couple of hundred pounds cheaper than this and the thing with the night as well is that you can buy it in a 50 mil size so you know you, you, you can spend a bit less money to at least get your hands on it i don't know if they do the night um as a 10 mil the night is also beautiful gorgeous stunning etc etc but the night is a very classic rose oud combination uh, Dominique Ropion and Frédéric Mal, when they when they put it together, they decided to take their huge hit perfume, Portrait of a Lady, and 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 to to work oud into it. This is what its name suggests, you know, pure oud. Um, 
I would love to know. I would love to know if, if, if it really does have just the three ingredients in it, whether um, whether it's been bolstered by synthetic musks or maybe it's like, you know, a bit of real oud. Sorry, not synthetic musks, but synthetic ouds. Maybe it's um, a bit of real oud, some synthetic musks and also a bit of synthetic oud. Um, but price over a thousand pounds. So, you know, we you, you can't judge what people choose that, to spend their money on, right? There are people out there who think I am absolutely nuts to spend as much as I spend on going to the cinema when the cinemas are open, as they are open in the UK now. Uh, whereas I, for example, spend mil minimal amounts on uh, going out to eat uh, and certainly on, for example, say alcohol drinks, I mean, uh, so some people will turn around and say to me, oh my goodness, you go to the cinema once a week, that must cost so much. And, and I feel like saying, well, you know, you get through three bottles of wine a week and you, you, can't, you can't judge what people spend their money on or clothes or cosmetics or cigarettes or trips, whatever. Um, but having said all of that, I would be interested to know if you are willing to share what is the most that you have spent on a bottle of perfume? Um, I don't see myself ever um being in in the sort of region of 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 of, of spending out on a, on a full bottle of this one and also by the time i saved that much money and plucked up enough courage to buy it i think all 2000 um bottles would be gone um but what 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 have you lot bought out there um was he saying personally is going to the cinema with his box wine and big mac <laughs> <laughs> I haven't actually been to a McDonald's for I don't know how long. 450 euro, says Ali. Um, what was it, though? And you're saying most I've paid for is a bottle of Amouage. OK, well, that that's that's probably going to be somewhere up there. I mean, I did save up. I saved up for a while because I really wanted to have a bottle of Frederick Mal's The Night. Um, and so I bought the 50 mils and I thought, OK, well, that's going to be a very, very special um, purchase. We also, I think my most expensive was 300 US dollars, says David. You need to tell me what it was on though. Uh, Woozy says 200 mils EDP of Coromandel is the most I've spent at retail. Well, that would have cost you a pretty penny as well. 1k, I wanted to keep all viruses away, says Thea. Well, <laughs> mind you, the oud in this probably would keep a few viruses away. Louis says, my most expensive for me is Le Lyon. 350, is that dollars for 200 mils? Yeah, Le Lyon, certainly not cheap either. Uh, Drawn by Sen says, for me, it was Saffron Rose by Grossmith in Fortnum and Masons. Yes, the Grossmith ones cost a pretty penny. 550 pounds, says Benjamin. For Begum Zerzhov, I think, which my girlfriend then dropped and smashed. Oh! But at least the kitchen smells great still. Goodness me. Ottoman Empire 3, my most expensive bottle, says Sylvia. Angela says, hi there, everyone. Very late, but happy to catch a bit of your life. We actually only started about 12 minutes ago. This is interesting. 100 mils of the night, time to musk up, says, for $1,100. But, but do you have any regrets? Do you have any regrets? Or are you happy that you bought it. We need to also put uh, this release in in a bit of context. I don't think it's the first time that Oud has featured in a Louis Vuitton release, but it's certainly the first time it's featured in this in this unadulterated, aggressive, beautiful form. And of course, it was about 19 years ago that Jacques Cavalier, together with Alberto Morias, gave us this. Now, this is the closest that I have got to vintage M7 from YSL. Those of you who were into perfume at the time, those of you who were around at the time, because of course some of you may not have been, 2002 was, was a while ago. Um, do you remember how shocked we were by this? I mean, we, we were sort of appalled and scandalized by the advertising campaign because we'd never seen a naked man before, etc., etc. But this is apparently the first scent which featured um, a hint of oud or a suggestion of oud in a mainstream Western European perfume. Um, I, you will know better than I do how vintagey this sample is. This is just a, this is a fifteen mil sample that I actually picked up at a sort of antiques market, antiques fair in in France a few years ago. I wore M7 to, to death. I loved it. I loved all of the products that went with it. And I'm just going to spray it now. I haven't actually sprayed this sample for the first time. So Jacques Cavalier has gone from, from this to this 
We should also give due credit to Alberto Morias, who made... So let, let's put them side by side as a kind of before and after. And this, the, the, actually, this is diffusing really beautifully because what made, um, what, what made M7 so special was that this darkness was balanced with a really, really fantastic bergamot citrus note at the top. Um, Sequoia by Comte de Garçon did Oud a year earlier than M7, says Jeremy. Oh, you may be right, in which case we need to rewrite the history books. Will we get a blotter update for M7, says Woozy. Um, if you like, would you like a blotter update for M7? This sample is still in pretty good condition. You know, you smell this now, and there are so many things that have come out in the intervening years that are more obviously Oudy. But you can still sense why this was so exciting um because it's got it's got it's it's got suggestions of of all of that danger to it yeah whereas this is like whoa okay <laughs> we've 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 all died and been been shipped off to a tannery somewhere um whereas this is this is i guess more western in its sensibility and certainly turn of the century western um really really great woodiness there and there's something Something almost Coca-Cola-like sweet. Maybe it's cinnamon, then. Maybe that's what I'm responding to. We should finish by just giving um, Vuitton a, 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 a bit of a shout-out, just to see what it is that they're saying about this scent. Uh, so there you go. It is said to be the scent of paradise, emblematic of olfactory culture in the Middle East. Oud is a journey unto itself, an immobile escape through time and space. Immobile escape. Okay. A raw material of such depth and so many facets that it seems to contain all others. Woody notes, deep as eternity, conceal animalistic, ambery and spicy facets. To glorify the beauty of, um, the raw beauty of a natural wonder, master perfumer Jacques Cavalier Beltrude dared to take a radical stand, composing a fragrance of absolute minimalism, just three ingredients like a bespoke showcase for a rare essence of oud assam in an immoderate dose of 10% of the formula. Steeped in the luminous softness of a cocoon of white musks, the wood of the gods reveals all the richness of its dark, powerful, and eternally mysterious character. So I would just repeat, the scent is tremendous, the price is a, is, is a personal issue. And I think we've got to leave it at that. So thank you very much for watching. What? <laughs> thank you very much for watching, but if you're sticking around for the live, then just come back in a few minutes for a flanker. If you're watching the recording, I would love to know what you, if you've tried this Vuitton, what you think of it and what you think of its price and how much you would pay for a bottle of perfume as well. Okay, see you in a bit. Bye.